train the muscles, not the joints. So, after I have the duck breast sandwich, then I'm gonna go to the gym at some point this afternoon. So I'll try to get earlier workout today. Last time I had a late workout, it was like one o'clock by the time I was done, one in the morning because of editing and different things I was doing. Today I'm gonna try to get my workout in a little earlier. And uh, yeah, so that way I'm not a vampire, you know, like a vampire workout guy. Vampires work out better at night. I've always been a night person for some reason. Most of my life, eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night was always the better time for me to work out or at least, you know, four or five in the afternoon. I was never a morning person ever in my whole entire life. Even when I was young, even when I was a kid, the mornings weren't my thing. So yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, you gotta go with those biorhythms sometimes. So first anyway, get some food. So yeah, so I'm gonna have a sandwich here and then oh, get to the yeah. gym this afternoon. Oh, no I had a good uh, arm training workout last night. So, I had a really good arm training workout last night. So, just did some shoulders, high reps, you know, 40, 45 reps uh, for a lot of body parts. And I was doing about 15 to 20 reps for biceps. Sometimes I mix this stuff up, I just change it around. And a uh, nice car. I like that. So yeah, sometimes I mix this stuff up just to just to keep it interesting for me. <clears throat> and at the same time, there is something to be said for pushing yourself with different rep ranges because if you're doing 20 reps, 30 reps, 40 reps, there's a different muscle fiber that is challenged. There's different parts of your system that are challenged and each contributes to overall muscle growth. So I've noticed since I've been doing really high reps and concentrating on high reps for a period of time that the shape in my muscles are coming out better and I'm getting more of a, a constant pump. So, um, you know, doing heavy weight is great and everything, but you want to eventually take this to uh, higher rep type workouts as well, because when you're stronger, now you can do more reps with heavier weight. And that's the whole point, right? More reps with heavier weight means more muscle mass. So you want to hit all the fibers, not just some of the fibers. So that's why you don't see me being too fanatical about one way or the other way, because all ways are good. So what we have here is a little bit of a problem here with immigration. I don't know uh, what we're going to do about this, but the thing is tomorrow is Canada Day. So we have, uh, you know, all these celebrations about Canadians and Canada and all this kind of stuff. But the thing is, is that some of us aren't even really Canadian. You know, some of us are native. Some of us have been here long before Canada was established. So, you know, some of us probably don't care too much that it's Canada Day as much as Canada is a great country in, in some way. Uh, this is a guy that's been forced into Canadian citizenship right here. And I don't know if I agree with it either. So. Uh, maybe we'll have to start an Indiegogo campaign for him or something, but uh, yeah, right here, right here. Anyway, you get my drift. I mean, if I'm up in the woods and stuff like that, I don't think this guy showed me his passport and saying, hey, I'm a Canadian, you know? This is a false representation of the Bigfoot. I'm pretty sure about that. I don't think the Bigfoot's running around the trees and saying, hey, it's Canada, Canada Day, and waving a flag around. I don't think that's what's happening. We have no police in uh, Harrison Hot Springs, but we got lots of shitters, so that's a good thing. You know, after talking to the police last week about the rave that we had across the lake and... So, investigative reporter here, Jason Gallant, I'm going to check out what the noise is, where the party noise is coming from. And it might be coming from the lake, but I'm not really sure. But I'm going to find out, because there's a lot of bass flying through the town. So I'm going to find out what this is and then uh, report back to you. So. Sorry, the audio is not great, but I only had so much equipment I could carry because I'm walking for a long distance here. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens here. Maybe we'll uncover the mystery. I'm saying they're totally undermanned, underfunded, everything. It's good to know that Harrison Hot Springs at least has enough shitters to deal with the amount of people that are coming here, but you know, who cares if anybody survives it, right? Because uh, you know, who cares about the police, right? Like, what do they do anyway, right? Like, you know, besides save people's lives from people not shooting each other on the beach for... At least, at least Harrison's got his priorities straight. Have plenty of shitters, and that makes a safe and happy town. So those of you who uh, saw me from yesterday's video, or the latest video I put up, uh, I basically was in the woods yesterday and I got bitten to death by mosquitoes with these lumps and shit all over me. So don't worry, I'm not going through puberty. I just got bitten by a bunch of mosquitoes here. But yeah, here's our uh, mulberry bush. We've got a mulberry tree here. These are these are actually pretty good. I'm gonna see if there's any ripe ones here. I have a couple bites of berries before we go to the gym. Here we go. I'll give you a look here. These are actually pretty good. Mulberries are good. Look like this. Yeah. 
supposedly a lot of antioxidants in mulberries. So yeah, mulberries are supposed to be pretty good for you. I enjoy eating these things from the bush here. A lot of them drop on the ground though. So you're gonna eat them off the ground. See, See look. See, there's one. This one. That's all right there. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I kind of like eating my eat a bunch of berries in the garden here. Kind of a something rewarding about eating stuff from your own yard or in the bushes close to your house or something. I actually do enjoy that. Now I just found a way to eat spiders. Uh, I don't think that's that's not going to happen anytime soon. I'm, I'm not going to eat any spiders anytime soon. But uh, but yeah, boy, there's a lot of spiders around here. If I figured out how to eat spiders, I think I would never have to go shopping again. And that, even if spiders don't taste very good, maybe it's worth it. Honestly, I don't like shopping that much. <laughs> Man, there's lots of stuff in the ground here. This is one of the reasons why we don't use a uh, weed killer. And all that other crap, just to have a nice lawn. It's a sense of poisoning yourself just to have a nice lawn. I don't know why people do that. Spend their entire life trying to make a nice lawn. Meanwhile, you can actually eat a lot of stuff. Like dandelion grows in your lawn all the time. Which I never understood because, you know, a lot of people use weed killer. But meanwhile, weeds, a lot of times people are buying weeds from the store. They're buying like chicory and all this kind of stuff. And it's called dandelion in the store, but it's really chicory. And then they're putting it in their salads. And I'm thinking you could just get this shit right out of your front yard. Why don't you do that? You know? So, if you do put so much weed killer on our lawns, then there'd probably be a lot less, a lot less cancer and all this other crap that people are dealing with, you know? I think that would probably be more important. And you save some money on groceries, I guess. You're not buying that shitty salad from the store. Stuff that's been sitting on the shelf for seven months before you get it. <laughs> yeah, so. Mulberries. They're pretty good. I like those puppies. A lot of people have heard of mulberry wine, but I never, uh, I never ate mulberries before. I moved in here, so it's kind of been a blessing actually finding this. Okay, sorry about that. I got a little sidetracked with the mulberries there. So anyway, yeah, don't put weed killer on your lawn because uh, some of the stuff on your lawn you could actually eat. You know, the dandelions and stuff, so do some research on it. It's actually pretty good. So now I'm going to go to Chilliwack. I'm going to go to the gym here. I'm going to get a good uh, training session in, and I will also... i got to do some errands and stuff. You know, typical crap, right? You know, that whole life thing again. You know, the life thing. Getting in the way of bodybuilding. I can't believe it. we got to give up this life thing and just, you know, become hardcore bodybuilder. Hardcore bodybuilder. See, look, i got to change. See, I'm getting... A, can you see this? Hardcore high exposure, then low exposure. Can you see how, the, how cool this is? you got to get the right exposure, right? It's so important for YouTube. Anyway, okay, I'll see you in Chilliwack. Still here through all that uh, vlogging and ranting and talking about Harrison Hot Springs and all the other stuff. Wow, and you guys must be dedicated, dedicated to learn the knowledge, the knowledge that is in every video. Uh, anyway, anyway, th thanks for staying around. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, as you can see, I'm doing the 90 pound dumbbells on the incline. I'm doing a higher rep range, but my pec, I notice my pecs, both of them are a little bit sore from the last workout. I did some uh, 295 pound bench presses a couple days earlier, and I noticed that I'm still a little bit tight. So I noticed that my reps weren't as high as they usually are with 90 pound dumbbells. So don't judge me, don't judge me. It's just that the reps are down a little bit, but not, not too bad. I still am, you know, pumping out quite a few reps anyway, and I'm getting a good pump. So like I said before, I like the higher reps sometimes. Sometimes the higher reps are just great. Sometimes the lower reps are great. It just depends on what you feel like. I know that every one of you have probably went through this at some point in your training where you just are repping out and just enjoying it. And it's almost like a guilty pleasure because you're like, oh, maybe I should be doing more weight or maybe I should be pushing myself. And, and then sometimes the opposite is true. Sometimes you're lifting heavy weight and you're like, I just enjoy the feeling of the heavy weight. And almost every workout is heavy weight, heavy weight, heavy weight. And then one day you do heavy weight and it just doesn't feel as good anymore. And you're like, what the heck happened? Well, that's a great time to switch to higher reps. You see, that's how I make the decision is, it's like I do something when it feels good. And then when it stops feeling good, then I change it up. And that's a really great technique to use in your 
your training. It's just changed up when it starts to not feel like it's nourishing to you anymore. So that's one of the ways I make decisions of whether I should be doing high reps or low reps, right? So that's my secret tip to you. So after doing about four or five sets of inclines with 90 pound dumbbells, I went to lat pull downs and sometimes I'll do lat pull down workouts, sometimes I'll do rowing workouts. But because there are so many muscles in the back, I kind of classify the back as two different areas in a way. And, and one of those areas is more like the lat movements, like the pullovers and the chin ups and the pull downs. And then the other is the thickness movements, such as rowing, okay? so. A lot of times if I do heavy rows one day, then the next time I go in the gym, I'll do more of a pull down type movement and vice versa. So that's kind of how I decide which exercise I'm gonna do. I'm always trying to hit all different aspects of the back, right? So the other thing to discuss is that I do wide grip pull downs as well as a little bit of a narrower grip or medium grip. And sometimes I find people don't play around with this grip enough in order to find which part hits their back. They, they usually are just so focused on just pulling the weight down and touching their chest with the bar. And you notice I don't touch my chest with the bar because the lat doesn't activate anymore once I pull down past a certain point. At that point, I start to in, internally rotate the shoulders or start to bend the arms more, which is just nothing more than a bicep workout. So then my biceps end up getting to failure long before my back does. So I want the back to hit failure. So that's the way I do it. And that's why I do it this way. You may be built differently though. So it's really important for you to understand this. If you're humerus, which is the upper bone, the upper bone part of the arm, you know, the funny bone. <laughs> it's actually not the funny bone, but anyway, the, the humerus. Do you know the humerus? Do you guys know what that is? It's the upper arm, okay? That, that bone there. It's uh, from the elbow to the shoulder, okay? Some people have a longer humerus than others uh, in comparison to uh, the forearm. And this will influence how far down they have to pull the bar in order to basically hit full range of motion for lat, okay? So it just depends on how you're built. So just bear this in mind. I'm not saying just pull to your nose or pull to your eyes or pull to your chin. It just, it's totally dependent on how you're built. But you will notice that after you pull past a certain point, that you're not really flexing the back anymore. You're actually starting to internally rotate the shoulder or flex the bicep, okay? So just notice at the end of your set, what are you feeling? What are you feeling that hit failure? What hit failure? And if you notice that your arms are just totally exhausted or your rear delts are totally exhausted, but your lats aren't exhausted at all, or in between your shoulder blades is not exhausted, well, then that means you're probably working the arms more than your back. So that's that's just a fun tip from Natural Glant Bodybuilding right there. Just like, wow, that's like, mind blown, right? Total, total fun tip right there. Just pay attention to what happens at the end of your set. So many people do not do this. They don't actually say, oh geez, you know, what, what actually hit fatigue there? What hit failure? Where, where, did, where did I actually experience the fatigue from the set? A lot of people just don't ask themselves that question and then they get random results. chest and back then I went over to do some leg training and here's just my legs here just so you guys can kind of see I've got some development on my legs I know how to train legs so just so you know these are the principles that I develop based on what work okay so you can see when I'm doing leg presses that I'm actually pushing more through the heels of my foot or through the middle of my foot and I'm pushing more with my hips not off of my knees so many guys try to push off of their knees on a leg press and they over bend the crap out of their knees and they end up with knee problems and all this sort of thing or really developed medial 
muscle muscles, which is the, the muscles by the knee, but their overall leg doesn't develop. They don't get that sweep. They don't get the major muscle bellies and the massive size on the legs. And then they're wondering why are their legs underdeveloped? The muscles by the knee are really developed, but not the muscles in the overall thigh. Basically how I did this is that I noticed that when I push through the hips, not only do I have less knee pain or knee problems, but I also have a stronger torque curve and it seems like I activate a lot more muscles from doing so. Okay, just so you know, put eight plates on the leg press. It's not an ego movement for me. What I'm trying to do is find the perfect range of motion which puts the least amount of stress on the hips and uh, basically the groin muscles and stuff, but at the same time keeping the pressure on the quads and the hamstrings, okay? So the range of motion that I find keeps the tension on there and at the same time doesn't overstretch the joints. So this is the thing. You gotta find that range of motion that doesn't overstretch but keeps a lot of stress on the muscles themselves. That was a decent workout. I just did some uh, chest, back, and legs. So lower amount of volume, just four sets for leg press, about four or five sets for chest, and about four or five sets for back. Uh, just some pull downs. The reason why I did pull downs is because I just did some Romanian deadlifts the other day and some bent over rows. So because of that, I don't need to do too much rowing work, right? So I kind of rotate my back work around rowing work and then pull down type work. So some stuff's more for back thickness, some stuff is more for back width. But yeah, now that I'm done, I'm gonna go home, do some video editing and uh, some computer stuff, and uh, that's about it. So if you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgrandbodybuilding.com, and thanks a lot for tuning in, I'll see you soon.